I don't care how long it takes, by the end of this video, Nebraska will win a national championship again. Now, it's gonna have to come in NCAA football instead of real life, but I'm sure that my Nebraska fans won't mind, because I promise this will be more enjoyable than watching Jeff Sims throw a football. On this file, we'll be starting right after they lost to Colorado, and once this is uploaded, you'll know the result of this game, but I'd assume a win, and we don't get it. Right now, this team is atrocious, and the Big Ten looks like this, but next season, I'll realign all the conferences, which means these four schools are joining the Big Ten. I'll also be adding in a 12 team playoff, and I obviously don't think Jeff Sims is the future, so my first move has to be benching him for Chubba Purdy, especially since we just lost to NIU. I'll also be looking for a new quarterback throughout recruiting, and that guy will probably be Chris Hall or Jamal Vickers, but on top of playing until I win it all with Nebraska, I also need to complete these five challenges in that same time span, and if I'm not able to do so, I'll be giving away a jersey to a random commenter. Since I'm coming in as a new head coach to replace Matt Rule, I'm a low level which means I can't even fully scout players, and that's frustrating because I've been trying to figure out how good both of these quarterbacks are. It turns out that four-stall Jamar Vickers is a 79 overall though, so I have to hope that we can beat Notre Dame out for him, and I honestly think the best visit week is against Louisiana Tech. It's one of the only ones I'm confident will win, and it's also Chubba Purdy's first start, so I need to make sure that he can come out and help us get the win, but he pitches it on the goal line straight to Fox, and they're gonna take this back to the house if we're not quick enough. You've gotta be kidding. It seemed like the right read, but it ended up not being, and I'm already playing about as realistic as Nebraska football gets this season. If you've never seen one of my rebuilds, I can jump into three games a year. And nearing the end of the third quarter, I think we finally figured it out. It shouldn't be this close though, and the fake field goal works. Look at that. Jeff Sims was still useful for something, and if we can get the fourth and ten stop, it's all over. So this defense from Sherman right here was incredible, and hopefully that impressed the visiting recruits. It might not have landed most of the guys on our board, which is a little bit disappointing, but Jamal Vickers has committed, and the last time I went out to scout him during one of his high school games, he looked incredible. To be honest, this game against Michigan's a lost cause, so we're just gonna sim it. And I don't think I'm gonna jump into any more this season just because we're already sitting at one and four. But if we get close to making a bowl game, then I'll make that decision to play some. Recruiting wise, we're in a lot of battles, but Brian Estes ended up being a plus nine gym coming in at an 81 overall. And if we could land the 6-6 tackle from Colorado, that would make a big difference. Fast forward to week 12, we're coming off of a zero to seven loss to Michigan State, and we're still in a tight battle for these three players. But we've also been able to land a lot of recruits, and that includes five five-star tight end Brett Nixon. I don't know why it's so easy to recruit at Nebraska, but with a few weeks left in the season, we have the number one class in the country, and hopefully we can keep that in the top five so we can knock out this first goal. Since we're three and six, though, we need to win out to make a bowl, and seven and two Maryland's on the schedule, so I think we're in a bit of trouble, but we can bounce back from this. It shouldn't be hard to do much better next season, and what if we end the year upsetting number 12 Iowa, which we do? That gives us a lot of momentum going into the offseason, but Chubba Party was terrible, and Gabe Irvin Jr. might be the only bright spot on this offense. Caleb Williams ended up winning the Heisman, and Kansas was one of the four teams that made the playoffs, but after beating LSU, they need to take down USC in the championship, and it looks like Caleb Williams is going to end his college career in the perfect way. This man really did it all for the Trojans, and next season, this playoff will have 12 teams in it. We honestly didn't end up losing that much talent, but what's important is we land Brian Estes, and Lance Douglas would be cool as well. I thought we might get both, but we only landed one of them, and normally I'd be upset, but this is the best way that I have ever started off a rebuild before, because here in my first year at Nebraska, we finished with the number one class. That means I've already completed one of our five goals before winning a championship, and I haven't even revealed the best recruit who has 95 speed, but he is a Juco, so Ross Jones can only be our halfback for a few seasons. And I just gotta say, I'm very excited to see how this team develops and to see what the future holds for Nebraska. Now, unfortunately, I'm only able to keep 16 teams in each conference, so I am gonna relegate Rutgers and Indiana to the American, but if I wanted to add these four Pac-12 teams, I had to do that in order for it to work. To keep things as realistic as possible. Every single non-conference opponent will follow who Nebraska would play in real life, and I still can't believe how many different five stars are interested in coming here. What's great is even four different three stars ended up turning into gyms, and redshirting wise, I think I need to let Ross Jones sit for a year. It's gonna be controversial, but because Chubba Purdy had a terrible offseason, I'm gonna start freshman Jamal Vickers, and we literally have no expectations this season, so there's no reason not to let him improve. His first game ever is against Northern Iowa, and everybody's in attendance to see the new quarterback. The expectations are extremely high, but I'm hoping he's able to lead us to a touchdown on our first drive. And here on third and goal, he is going to have a wide open slant, but he misses. That is a rough throw from the freshman to put it way behind his receiver. But hopefully as time goes on, he's able to improve. And let's just say that by the end of the third quarter, he had it all figured out. Now the defense did play a large role in us winning, but Northern Iowa just wasn't a good enough team. And I'm curious to see what his numbers look like against actual competition. Now I probably shouldn't have wasted one of the three games I had to jump into against the Panthers because I had 
had to sim against Colorado. And obviously we couldn't take down Deion Sanders, but we are going to beat UTEP. So we're going to be two and one to start Big Ten Conference play against number 16 UCLA. And without Caleb Williams, USC has already lost three. Before we jump into our game against the Bruins, you'll see that recruiting wise, things are not going well, but there's one target we really need. And that's five, nine, four star cornerback Marcus Bowman out of Illinois. He would help our defense tremendously. And hopefully we're able to pull off the upset, but I'm not expecting much out of freshman quarterback Jamal Vickers. He still needs a lot of time to develop. This play ended up going for a bit extra. And even though I'm the head coach now, seeing stuff like that will haunt these fans because it'll remind them of what Scott Frost was like. All I'm going to say is a quarter and a half into it, we're doing pretty well, but it's because of this defense. And the crazy part is it still has a lot of room for improvement. Isaac Gifford's going to get the interception. And can he take this back to the house? That would have been incredible, but he still got us down to the three and we are about to go up 21 to three. It's only year number two, but Jamal Vickers is going to help this team exceed a lot of expectations. He's rolling around for the touchdown. And can you imagine what this team is going to be like the more it develops? They're going to probably throw another interception right here. Come on, someone hold on to it. What a result this is, giving Cornhusker fans a little bit of hope again, which is not good because we all know that normally leads to disappointment in Nebraska. I wish I would have scheduled all these guys to visit last week, but instead it's going to have to come against Wisconsin. And we're on a roll right now. Here against Purdue, we're going to sim it and they beat us by 10. And even worse, we lost the 6-6 tackle to Oklahoma. Of course, now we have to face off against number one Penn State and Drew Aller, who is going to beat us by three. And I'm glad it was close, but this is what I meant by getting our hopes up. We went from three and one to three and three, and I'm going to play the game where everybody's visiting. So it's just brutal to have all these results go that way. And we're also going to lose to Oregon. Four straight L's have put us near the bottom of our division with Wisconsin. And Jamal Vickers has a lot of improving to do. We also haven't really gotten what we wanted out of recruiting as we're in so many different battles and Marcus Bowman still hasn't committed. But hopefully if we can win, that changes. And this one seems to be going identically to how the UCLA one went. We're about to go up 21 to three. And the only reason we're in this position is because of our defense. However, with a few minutes remaining, we have not scored since then. So we need to get into the end zone on this drive. And on third and goal, I want to put the ball in the hands of Gabe Irvin Jr., but it's not going to work. I don't like taking three here, but I feel like we can get a stop. And on fourth and one, I'm going to send the house, but Bryson Green just routed us up. It's been rough trying to hold the Badgers here. They went with four verticals and they're going to throw it. It's Bryson Green again, who comes down with it. And can somebody tell me why our safety just got toasted this badly? That is not ideal because we have visits on the line. We have a bowl game potentially on the line, but on the kick return, Bullock is going to be able to get to about midfield and we only need three. So we're not in a terrible position here on second down. Vickers is going to roll out and throw a dime, which makes me feel pretty confident in this team's ability to get into field goal range. The implications of this drive are immense and Bullock is going to get open. The throw won't get out. So it all depends on whether Timmy Bleak Road has the leg for this kick or not. There's somebody back there. So I don't think so. It's no good. And let me tell you boys, this ball could not have come any closer. That result just makes me want to be done with season number two. But on the bright side, at least these five prospects committed. We ended up beating Washington by three, but then we lost by the same score flipped to Minnesota. And for whatever weird reason, even though I was ranked fourth, we're going to beat them again. Five and seven is not going to do it if I want to keep my job though. And I can tell that they're very close to firing me. Clemson killer Riley Leonard ended up winning the Heisman. And unfortunately, we didn't come close of sniffing the 12 team playoff. And even with the new system, the top two teams made the championship. Drew Aller ended up dominating, taking it home for Penn State. And I'm not sure how this next year is going to go because we're losing quite a few seniors. Even 6'5 wide receiver Adam Garrison is leaving us to get playing time at Navy. And I don't think he realizes they're not going to pass the ball. I need to get Alex Bullock to stay though. And I'm going to guarantee he's a second round pick. But since that stills left him undecided, I'm going to have to lie and guarantee a conference championship. Assuming we don't win the Big Ten, that's going to ruin trust in game with a lot of players. But somehow I was able to get all three of those recruits to commit. And I understand that this class has nothing on the last one. But since we had so many graduates, a lot of these guys are JUCOs and they're going to see the field relatively quickly. Something that really surprised me about our offseason training is Jamal Vickers actually ended up becoming a worse quarterback than Chris Hall. And since this guy's a redshirt freshman, I need to see what he can do. It certainly wasn't expected, but we have ourselves a quarterback battle and whoever wins will be starting in the second toughest conference. We're going to need to recruit well again because we're losing 16 seniors. And it's crazy, but there are a lot of five stars at the top of the board that are interested in playing here. I don't understand why because we're projected to finish near the bottom of the Big Ten. And I'm also on the hot seat, so we're not very stable. Luckily, Nebraska has Akron scheduled first in 2025, and we are going to thrash them. So maybe this quarterback switch is all that we needed, and it would probably be best if I hopped into the game against Cincinnati, but I trusted us and we win again. Hopefully with this turnaround, we'd be able to land some of these prospects because a couple we really need. And my main focus is 81 overall cornerback Josh Lane, who has 97 speed. Last year, we got the cornerback that we needed, but I want to pair him with somebody that's even better. And he along 
along with these seven other guys are ready to visit already so i'm going to schedule them for ulm because there's no reason that the warhawks should beat us we are at home and we're going to beat them by 34. i have to say i think chris hall's running away with the starting job but his first true test will be against ucla and they're not ranked this year but we're playing them on the road so it's not going to be easy there are routes that are scrambled i can't see what numbers receivers are but on third down we pick it up and alex bullock returning is massive for this team without him here i'm not sure how good chris hall would be doing and on third down we are going to get in and it's all because gabe Irvin jr just ran over this cornerback chris hall was a part of that first recruiting class but i always imagined he would just be a backup instead he's our great starter and new freshman kicker chris wise also has a leg so we can now hit from 50. for ucla fans this was a brutal one to watch but we just dominated them and this is our best start yet at 4-0 but i don't want to get too excited yet because last season everything came crashing down after the ucla game going into week seven we are ranked in the top 20 at 4-0 but we're playing a tough opponent so i'm gonna have some prospects visiting going into this ohio state is two and two but if we could beat the buckeyes that would confirm that we're actually legit chris hall has never faced a defense like this before so i'm a little scared to see how the red shirt freshman does he throws an interception on his first drive and that's gonna go all the way back to the crib this is exactly what i was worried about and i don't think devin brown plans on losing to nebraska let's just say that here in the third quarter we still haven't scored and i'm just gonna throw up a 50 50 ball i'm desperate at this point the fans are so disappointed and we are not as good as i would like us to be chris hall definitely got a little bit exposed against the Buckeyes. And of course, the reigning national champions are next on the schedule, so we're going to lose that as well. I don't think it's time to sound the alarms because we're still doing pretty well in recruiting, but it's definitely concerning we're coming off two losses and USC also beats us. So it seems like this midseason stretch, which ruined us last year, is going to do it again, but we win in overtime against Oregon and that result hopefully changes everything because I can't get fired. We might not have a chance at winning the Big Ten, but we can still make a bowl. And if you're curious about Josh Lane, we're still in the battle, but we're down by a thousand. However, I have two coach upgrades, which are both going into kitchen sink, and that allows me to put 700 points on every player. Hopefully, that's the difference maker in landing him, and against Wisconsin, we win by seven, so we're already six and three, which should increase my job security, but they just want more out of me, and against Washington, we get another result, so I'm starting to think we might get lucky enough to sneak into the 12-team playoff. We have three good losses, and we always win in sim against Iowa, so I'm gonna trust that that'll happen for the third year in a row, and I'll take care of business on the road at Minnesota. This team does not feel like a potential playoff one, but we're sitting in a decent position and that's a terrible throw. But what was eye-opening to me was this is Jamal Vickers at quarterback and that means over the past few weeks, Chris Hall ended up getting injured. I don't know when exactly it happened, but Jamal Vickers is doing a terrible job today and this cannot be how season three ends. We need to go out and get a win. That's another interception on the goal line. You have got to be kidding me. Jamal Vickers is not getting it done, but because of our defense, somehow we are still in the game and to end the third quarter, I might as well just try to send it over top. We beat him and Bell holds on. On, so we still have a chance and I just got sacked so quickly. Okay, hang on. There was a flag on the play and it turns out that since I was in hurry up offense, 91 hadn't gotten back to the line of scrimmage yet. So he just decided to take me out. I've never seen that happen before in NCAA football. Normally they just teleport. We're going to score though. And with three minutes remaining, we have the ball back. Jamal Vickers is going to take a sack, but even with three timeouts, I am going to play aggressive, go for it on fourth and 10, and we are going to convert plus more. I am not willing to get fired at Nebraska. Gabe Irwin Jr. might have a lot of space over here. I'm going to get around these two defenders and he could take this to the crib. Please do not get caught. Come on. He is literally incredible, but next year we're going to have an even better running back and that's because 95 speed Ross Jones will be a junior. Unfortunately, it seems like Minnesota is about to respond back with a touchdown, but they've left us 48 seconds on the clock and look who's back there at returner. It's Ross Jones. He's going to cut back here and he has the speed for this. Come on, buddy. You just got to use it to your advantage and I don't know how he got caught. I think it's going to be okay because all we need is a field goal to send it to overtime, but I would have liked more there and what is Jamal Vickers doing. He is rolling out and that is going to be a first plus more. When I recruited him, he was not known for scrambling, but he seems to be improving his game and that throw is going to be underthrown. Gilbert would have been gone for a touchdown. You've got to be joking. All he had to do was float this ball far enough in the air, but when I started talking good about him, he screwed up and this is not how I thought the season would end. It's like Jeff Sims is still back there at quarterback against Iowa. We are going to somehow win by 10 and I don't understand why we own them on this dynasty file. I think they've been ranked every single time we've met and it puts me in a position where if we win our bowl game, I probably won't get fired. The battles the land Maurice Bailey and Josh Lane are both going to go to the offseason. And despite playing in way less games than Jamal Vickers, Chris Hall had a much better freshman year. Gabe Irvin Jr. didn't do great, but he's going to graduate. And I'm sure that Alex Bullock regrets coming back. I probably broke both of these promises to him, but at least it seems like Jalen Milrow finally figured it out. And we made the Gator Bowl against the Gators. Getting a win here is probably crucial to me keeping my job. And the Gators are a 93 overall team. So we got to take things seriously. And luckily for us, Chris Hall is back.
back from injury and we're starting off with a touchdown. He just makes the team so much better. And here on the goal line, we're going to get in again, but Florida is trying to end the half with a touchdown of their own. And I think they're going to get it. Trevor Etienne's a good running back and there's only so much I can do. So with about three minutes left, it is all tied up, but we do have possession of the football and it seems like we're about to get into the end zone here. I'm going to have to roll out with Chris Hall and throw a laser. I wish I could say we're holding on defensively, but that's not the case. And I almost want Florida to get in here just to give us a chance. Here on third down though, I'm shooting the gap and we blow it up. So there's a chance for a massive fourth and goal stop. We just need to generate some pressure. Come on boys. He has way too much time back there. Someone please sack him. This is ridiculous. You've got to be kidding. There were three rushers out there on that field, but nobody got in. So we need Jones to make a highlight play. And that back juke was disgusting. Come on, buddy. You have 95 speed. He does not play like this, but a win here would save my job. So I really need it to go that way. And the corner route is overthrown. So I'm hoping that does not cost us in the end. I'm going to roll out and throw another one this time to the tight end. And it is intercepted. This is not how the game needs to end. Evidently, Nebraska can never have anything nice, not even a bowl win. And with about 10 seconds remaining, I think they're going to be able to get into field goal range. Zach Pyron throws it and he had a man open. What a terrible finish this has been. We're going to go out. Sorry, I can't believe it. And I just have to pray I don't get fired because that would set us back a ton. My job security is a nice 69%. So we'll see what happens. And if you were wondering how the playoffs went, Alabama and Penn State are meeting in the championship. So once again, even with 12 teams, it's the top two remaining. And Heisman winner Jalen Milrow is out with a strained shoulder. Drew Aller is going for his second straight national championship. And on third and 12, he is going to throw an interception. So Tyler Buckner was able to get it done, but really it was his defense that did the job. And after going 16-0 and winning it all one last time, Nick Saban is going to retire. Fortunately for me, I was not fired. And we're losing nine starters to the draft or graduation, but I think things will be okay. We're in a position where I think these four players are all going to commit during the offseason. And thankfully, Josh Lane didn't break my heart. This class also isn't as good as our last one, but it will get us up to number six. And I cannot wait to see how all of these players make a massive difference for us. Five-star athlete Maurice Bailey is an 81 overall wide receiver, but I'm actually going to put him at halfback. And that's because only one of our runners had a good off season. The same could be said for some of our other higher overall guys. And even quarterback Chris Hall only got up to an 85 overall. Going into season four, unfortunately, the non-conference schedule has Tennessee on it. But in the preseason rankings, they're all the way down here at 50. So maybe they won't be that good. As for us, by 2019, we're supposed to be the number one team in the country. But people have been saying Nebraska is going to be good again for like 20 years. So I'm not going to buy into the hype. In this recruiting cycle, we only have six seniors. So we really don't need much. And our Big Ten projection isn't very high, but we're slowly moving up to about mid table. We also have a middle linebacker that's projected to be first team all conference. So maybe he's the guy that helps us knock off this defensive award goal. In our first game against Ohio, we should go out and thrash them, which we do. And Chris Hall is off to a great start to his sophomore year. My athletic director thinks we need to change things up against Tennessee though. And I'm not sure why, because we're coming off a 49 point win. So I didn't change a thing and we win by 14. Let's just say that through these first few performances, our defense has been pretty good, but we just lost to North Dakota. And how is that even possible for us to do? They scored 44 on us, which means it wasn't even close. And Chris Hall threw two interceptions to an FCS school. Just when I thought we were turning things around that we might make the playoffs, we are going to lose back-to-back -back games. And with those results, I'm not sure how we're going to hold on to all of our leads over these recruits. I'm going to schedule them for a visit against Penn State. But prior to that one, we're playing at number four, Ohio State. And last year when I jumped in, they blew us out. So I don't think we're ready for it yet. And we're going to lose our third straight. I mean, we could still make the playoffs at nine and three, but that would be very difficult to do. And these Penn State cornerbacks are going insane. But Demetrius Bell is just the better wide receiver. I'm honestly surprised that I haven't been fired yet, but they are giving me a longer chance here. And without Drew Aller here, the Penn State offense just isn't very good. This should be an interception. But unfortunately for us, McNeil was not able to get a foot in bounds. So the Nittany Lions are finally going to get on the board. By the fourth quarter, our lead was still 11. And it's honestly just been a very low scoring game. I'm going for it on fourth and five though, and we pick it up. So Mickey Thomas is having himself a day and that's his third touchdown. With a few minutes remaining, Penn State did score, but they went for the onside kick and we recovered the ball. So we should be in a position where new starting running back Ross Jones can help us run out the clock. And I know this guy has 95 speed, but for some reason, it just doesn't feel like it all of the time. He gets caught a lot of the time when I'm not expecting him to, but on this play, I'm going to roll out and throw it into a one-handed catch. I don't know what Mickey Thomas is on today, but this is his fourth touchdown grab. And I'm praying that this win helps us finish the year strong. In one week, we were able to land all 10 of these guys. So something is definitely going right for us. And we've only played six games. So there's still a lot of football left. I'm hoping we have what it takes to beat USC, but it is at the Coliseum. So I'm a bit worried. And this one's already starting to feel like Ohio State did last year as we're just not on the same level as some of these teams. I've learned from my mistakes though. So this time I'm running 
down as much clock as possible to try to stay in it, and Ross Jones is a beast. I wish he felt a little faster, but he is getting things done until now, and I hate that he didn't pick up that third and short, so we have to go for it on fourth and three, and I'm taking the corner route. I honestly don't know how Chris Hall was able to fit that ball in, but as the third quarter comes to a close, we are still in it. I've played a lot slower, and it is definitely paid off. We've now got the Trojans on a third and one, and this handoff's going a bit wide. We're going to bring them down short, and boys, if I could make this the final possession of the game, our season might not be over yet. I truthfully believe that we could make the playoffs with three losses, and you know what? Let's just go for the big shot. We're going to throw it up with Chris Hall. It's going to be intercepted, and that's the exact opposite of what I needed to do, but I thought we had a step on them there, and I hope I don't come back to regret it. That sack actually took them out of field goal range, so they're going for it on fourth and 12. They don't pick it up, and I cannot believe that we are in this position right now. We might be able to actually win, but I'm going to need a little bit more time in the pocket, and you know what? I'll just go right back to Mickey Thomas. That guy went off against Penn State, and our corner route's going to dust the corner there. Lloyd's going to get inside the 30, so we could very well pull off this upset now. On the halfback toss, Ross Jones is going to get out in space, and that'll put him inside the USC red zone, and there's no way that they're going to be able to fire me after this result. As time winds down, the kick is going to be up, and it's going straight down the middle, so we have taken down the Trojans, and I still can't believe this is a Big Ten matchup. Unfortunately, unless we beat Washington and they lose one other, I don't think we can win the conference, but I'd like to at least make a bowl game again, and I'm going to sim to that matchup. We got blown out by Oregon, which isn't great, and then we lost to Wisconsin as well, so I'm starting to feel like all that work we put in isn't going to pay off, but we just upset the Huskies, and I swear, none of this stuff makes any sense. With two games left, we just need to win one of them to make a bowl, and we lost to Minnesota, but we always beat Iowa and Sim, so I'm going to do that, and the result is in. We somehow put up 48 points while also throwing three interceptions, and it looks like Jalen Milrow couldn't win back-to-back -back Heismans, but Alabama's back in the playoffs as an undefeated team. For our bowl game, we're taking on number 15 Marshall, and we're 15 overalls better than them, so even though they're ranked way higher, this should be cake, and let's just hope that this 20-point win is enough for me to keep my job at Nebraska. Most of Chris Hall's stats didn't really improve, but he had a big jump to his completion percentage, and he also rushed for just as many touchdowns as Ross Jones. Receiving-wise, we've still yet to have a 1,000-yard receiver, and none of our defensive players have come even close to winning a defensive award yet. It seems like nobody's been able to beat Alabama yet, and if they win this championship, they're going to be on a 32-game winning streak, so even without Nick Saban, they're not struggling. It wasn't even close in the end. They won by 24 points, and Jalen Milrow has fully redeemed himself. It turns out that one loss to Texas did not define his career. The real question is, will I be fired, though? And Nebraska couldn't pull the trigger, but I only have two years left on my contract. Now, I will say, even though we're losing six seniors this offseason, it's not going to hurt us that much because I convinced these four players to stay, and that means we only had one player drafted into the NFL, but this recruiting class is set to be another amazing one, and how is Stephen McDonald not committed yet? We have a 14,000-point lead on him over Penn State, so it shouldn't have taken us until offseason recruiting to secure him, but just like that first season, I have signed the number one recruiting class, and I swear, if we can't start making the playoffs at least, I'm going to lose my mind. This team is by far the most talented one we've ever had, so there can no longer be any more excuses, and can you believe that Jamal Vickers only developed into an 83 overall? It just blows my mind, but we have five wide receivers that are all seniors above 91 overall, and I'm going to switch us to an air raid offense where we pass the ball a lot more. Now, something I normally don't talk about is the cut player screen, but I've already removed everybody that I can, and we have 14 wide receivers on this roster, so I think I'm going to cut both of these junior red shirts, which is going to hurt us a ton in the short term, but in the long run, the younger guys will get on the field sooner, and I'm also able to redshirt a majority of them to keep them around for even longer. Going into season number five, we're projected to be the 41st best team in the country, and I told you all this championship contender screen lied because we were supposed to be a top five team already. I do have some hope that we finally win a defensive award because Tony Miller's supposed to be an All-American, but up to this point, I've still only been able to complete one of our five goals, and I swear, if we lose to Northern Illinois, I'm gonna think that this team is just cursed. We scored 77, and maybe Chris Hall isn't playing around. He had seven touchdowns. I'm normally not that confident about simming, but we just got a crazy result, and we scored 45 against Tennessee, so I'm expecting to see Chris Hall in the Heisman race very soon. We had a couple of weeks off, but after that, we have no more buys, and we are gonna pound UCLA, so as a 93 overall team, I'm feeling confident, but knowing NCAA football sim engine, we would lose to a team like Indiana, and what was I saying? I literally predicted it. They were a 74 overall team, and on top of that, we were at home, but you will see that Vickers and Hall combined for four picks. I'm gonna guess that Chris Hall got hurt, but he's not on the injury report, so he must have only been knocked out of that game with a concussion or something. Either way, I am ticked because we should not have lost that game, and now I'm taking sacks. So here in the fourth quarter against Illinois, we are losing by three, but we have the ball. I'm gonna find Demetrius Bell. He's gonna make 
make a guy miss and go down in the red zone. I cannot believe that we are in this position right now, but I'm going to thread the needle. And if we could hang on here, this would be a very quality win. On third down, they're going to pick it up. But we've gotten them to a fourth and inches Iran commit, and this stop should change everything. Now with only three minutes remaining, I think we're in a position where we can run out the rest of the clock. Hull is going to get the first down. And we do not run it much anymore, but when we do, we do it effectively. This option's going to go for a lot more than it was originally going to. Dennis jukes out multiple people. And you know what? I think we ought to go for the touchdown. I'm going to throw this one right to Coleman. And this is a great bounce back win after our loss to Indiana. Pretty much every player I wanted in this class ended up committing already. So things are on their way back up. And on the road against Penn State, we ended up winning by 29. That alone was just enough to get us ranked inside the top 25. And looking at the rest of our schedule, I'm going to jump into the Oregon game and the Minnesota one. So I need to sim this week against USC and we're going to go out and win by 28. I knew it would eventually have to happen. And as you can see, Chris Hall is in the Heisman race. So he needs to keep it up against number four, Oregon. And they haven't lost a game yet. So this is going to be tough. I'm just excited that we actually seem to be legit for once. And I'm going to take this 15 yard in to Mickey Thomas. This is around the point where things normally come crashing down. So if we could win this game, everything would be changed. I'm going to roll around and I'm going to dive into the end zone. And with a couple minutes remaining in the second quarter, we're going to take a 17 to 7 lead. Ever since that first drive, it seemed like we're the better team because our defense keeps getting stops. And I've been waiting so long for us to perform a lot better. What is this pressure? And why did nobody pick up number 54 on that blitz? That is a little bit unfortunate. I was hoping we'd have a better ending to the half and that throw is going to absolutely no one. So definitely not what you want to see there, but at least we're still winning. With about four minutes remaining, we're still up by seven. We need to continue to hold on to our lead on this drive. And I've been trying to mix in a little bit of the run, but passing is still superior for us. And on this slant, that should be a touchdown. But because Mickey Thomas fell short, we're going to need a little bit more. And that corner route was wide open. If you haven't noticed, Chris Hall certainly is not perfect yet. And he's going to fumble the football. This has got to be a joke. All I'm going to say is this is a forward throwing motion. That should not be a fumble. And if Oregon wins this game because of that, I am going to be so upset. Here on second and 10, there was no one open. So maybe I should go with more man than zone because everybody seemed to be covered. And here on third and 10, again, there's nothing to take. That stop practically guarantees us a stop here on fourth and long, and we're going to knock it away. So what a result this is going to be. It might just get us into the college football playoffs. And all we need to do is pick up this third and five. The slant is open. Bell has ended the game. And Chris Hall continues his push for winning the Heisman. We've jumped up to the 16th spot in the playoff poll. But before we see how the season ends, a word from today's video sponsor, Prize Picks. If you somehow still don't know what Prize Picks is, you simply pick higher or lower on player projections. And this week, I am fading the Iowa offense because Cade McNamara has yet to clear his projection while adding in an NFL lock as well to mix it up. By the time this video is live, you'll know how that did. And if you add more players, you can win up to 25x your money. But I'm sticking with these two and putting in 25 to hopefully win 75. I can also get you a deposit match up to $100 on Prize Picks. So use promo code BOARD when you sign up and they'll match it up to $100, assuming you reside in one of the 31 states they're available in. Now let's get back to the Nebraska rebuild. And I'm playing this one against Minnesota, so we just have to sim to it. We lose to Wisconsin. And you know what? I'm starting to think Nebraska is cursed. At least we beat Washington. And it's actually not that bad because if we went out, we'd make the Big Ten Conference Championship. And that's only because we have the tiebreaker over Oregon. Chris Hall is also just behind AJ Newberry for winning the Heisman. So I'd argue at this point, we're actually back. But only if we're able to beat Minnesota at their place. And that's not going to be easy. The good news is we have a very solid offense. So it won't take long for us to find the end zone again with Malachi Coleman. But with a minute left in the second quarter, we only have seven points. So Chris Hall has clearly been shut down quite a bit today. That is certainly not ideal, but we should at least punch it in with this run. And I swear, if Minnesota hits this field goal to end the half, I would have lost my mind. We're only down by 10, so it's not the end of the world. But they have had an answer for our passing attack, and everything's boxed with man-to-man -man coverage. I have to throw up a 50-50 ball, and it's dropped. I honestly don't even know what to go with. I'm not sure what's going to work. Mickey Thomas has not toasted those guys by enough yards, but he still made what I thought was an incredible catch until I realized his foot wasn't in. The game wouldn't even let me challenge it, which is really frustrating, and I can't believe that we're about to lose to the Gophers. I never saw this coming. I thought we'd crush them with our high-scoring offense, but instead, we got exposed, and to end the season against Iowa, we put up 49. Hopefully, this is enough for Chris Hall to win the Heisman Trophy, but since we weren't able to make the conference championship, I don't have much faith, and it wasn't even close as the Vanderbilt halfback won. He had 31 total touchdowns, and his Commodores are a top two team, so I guess that's understandable, but Chris Hall had a remarkable year. He was our leading rusher as well, which I'm sure our running backs didn't like, and all five of these seniors put up some pretty incredible receiving stats. Demetrius Bell wouldn't win the Belitnikoff, though, because Cole Pruitt out of Washington State went for 2,500 yards, and we 
we still haven't had a defensive player even come close to sniffing a defensive trophy. Don't ask me how, but somehow 7-5 Alabama is ranked above us, and I thought we might knock off one of these challenges this year, but that didn't happen. Instead, we missed out on the 12-team playoff for another year, and our bowl matchup is against the Crimson Tide. You could say that this is our chance to prove that they shouldn't be ranked higher than us, so I guess I'll take that. And it honestly wasn't even close, so Jamal Vickers got to see the field one last time. This guy was supposed to be our future as a freshman, but ever since then, he never got to play. And I guess it's nice that I was able to win another bowl game with Nebraska, but I'm still desperate to get us into the playoffs. I mean, these are the two colleges that are making the championship now. And if Houston can't pick up this fourth and eight, the Heisman winner is going to take home the title. The ball is knocked away. So what a year for senior AJ Newberry. Thankfully, that 10-3 and season got me a contract extension. And not only did Chris Hall set a ton of school records, but he got Demetrius Bell and Mickey Thomas onto that list as well. I am worried about this player's leaving stage though, and let's just go ahead and crack all of this mess open. First things first, we're losing a ton of seniors, but I'm glad to see a lot of them are projected to go on to the NFL. And now I gotta point out that these three guys are transferring out, and Chris Hall, the projected first round pick, is gonna need to stay. I'm gonna guarantee him he wins the Heisman Trophy, and that is all it took for him to want to, but I don't think he realizes that he just lost all five of his top targets to the NFL. It shouldn't be too big of a deal because I signed the number one class again, and I honestly have no idea why it's so easy to still recruit at Nebraska despite us not having any success. What happens during these offseason training results is very important, and like expected, Chris Hall is our number one player at a 97 overall. At wide receiver, it seems like Adam Motley's going to be the standout guy, and I just have to hope that this is finally the season where we can sneak into the college football playoffs. It should happen considering we're supposed to be the fifth best team in the country, and it's a pleasant surprise to know that we're projected to finish this high in the Big Ten, but obviously the only reason for that is because Chris Hall is returning. I'm expecting him to light it up against UTEP and we scored 52, but I want us to hang 70 on South Dakota State. We have finally gotten to the point where we can blow people out. And the first game I'm going to probably jump into is the one at USC, so we have to sim against Arizona where we win. And going into week six, the top three teams are all from the Big Ten. Six of the last nine colleges we're going to face are ranked in the top 25, and this is truthfully a brutal slate. But I have faith in Chris Hall to make the right reads and to open it up. He's going to get a 20-yard pass to Motley who goes down at the one. Just to finish it off, I'm going to hand it off to David Dennis. And approaching halftime, it is 21 to 0. It is not looking good for the Trojans. But you know what? I am perfectly fine with that because we are going to get an easy win. And maybe that'll propel us to the number one spot. I know Chris Hall has to be at the top of the Heisman race. But for whatever odd reason, he is not on here. And at least I was right about us jumping over Ohio State. But now we have to host number three, Illinois. And I'm not worried because their two best quarterbacks are both injured. Freshman Curtis Simmons is back there. And I'm just going to send blitzes, make him uncomfortable. And there's no way he just pulled that pass off on the run. We missed the tackle. Please tell me we are not about to give up a touchdown here. That was not the ideal start against the number three team in the nation. And here on third and 29, we should pick this up here, but it is dropped. That was one of the best throws Chris Hall has ever made, but he is missing his old wide receivers. And I can't believe how good the fighting Illini's defense is. We're probably going to be trailing going into the half unless we can get a field goal. And it doesn't make sense for us to be struggling this bad. I might as well just throw up a 50-50 ball and it is underthrown. That's an interception. So Chris Hall is eight for 19 on the day. And let's just say that here in the second half, he has got to switch things up or else he's going to lose on the Heisman race. That ball is placed perfectly. And thank goodness we should be able to finish it off. With about four minutes left, we have the fighting Illini on a third and 12. Let's see what the third stringer does. He throws a dot to the end zone. And I guess I should have never doubted Curtis Simmons because he's doing a good job. I've already started to chew the clock and my hope is this is the final drive of the game. I'm going to roll around with Chris Hall here. I might as well just go for it. And I got the block that I needed. Could I take this to the crib? I did not think it was going to go for this many yards. I'm fighting for even more. And Chris has been such a good pocket passer that I didn't even realize how fast he could be. Obviously, since that play went for so many yards, we can't run out the rest of the clock, but that's another bad throw. And here on third down, I just need him to hit a target. The slant is not open. So what a disappointing way to end what could have been a great drive. If Chris Simmons gets us our first loss, I'm going to be so upset. Here on third and 10, he just took his check down. And I can't believe Illinois is not going for this, but they just went with the safe route and barely made it. Since all we need is a field goal, I'm not too worried. Dennis is going to spin out of there to get us an extra 10 or 15. And on this next one, I'm going to fake the run, go with the pass. And I feel like Barrett Young is going to beat his corner over there. I had the laser to him inside the 10. So now we can just kick the field goal to narrowly escape. This is definitely the best we've ever done. But right now we're a part of the toughest conference in the nation. And I just have a feeling that during Sim, we're going to lose to one of these big 10 teams. I'm only allowed to hop into one more regular season one. So I'm going to miss out on college game day. We're just going to have to sim it against the Nittany Lions. And thankfully we won. I know at some point we're going to get a result that we don't want to see. But even if we lose a game or two, I'd assume at this point we're a lock for the college football
football playoffs. And with four games left, Daniel Adams is beating out Chris Hall in the Heisman race. I'm just going to sim the next two, hope for the best, and then jump into one of the final two. And I can't believe with worse wide receivers, we are putting up numbers like this every week. Apparently, it's not enough to make us the number one team in the country as that spot goes to LSU. But if we win this next one at home against Wisconsin, we're going to seal our division in the Big Ten, and we do. No matter what, it's sealed, so we could lose to Iowa in this final game. And I'm pretty sure on this dynasty file, we've never lost to them in sim, so I'm not even worried, and you've got to be kidding. That loss is going to drop us all the way down here to number six, but we have the number one offense in the country, so I'm sure we'll bounce back. The Big Ten Championship is against Michigan, and I guess the coaching poll has us at number five, but either way, this is probably the most important game of this rebuild, because if we lose, there's a chance we could miss the playoffs entirely, and if we win, I'd assume we'd get a first round buy, so we just have to hope for the best, and that's a good start. I'm not sure how a four-loss Michigan won their division in the Big Ten, but we have to compete with them, and let me tell you, we are off to a solid start. Here on third and seven, they are going to convert, but we've gotten them to another third and ten, and this time I'm going with zone, which did much better. Approaching the end of the first half, it's not looking pretty for the Wolverines. We're about to go up 21 to zero, and hopefully we can just hold them to a field goal here. They've moved it all the way down the field, and how was Joe Little that wide open? Not the ideal ending to the second quarter we wanted, but we're doing a good job still, and a touchdown here should pretty much seal it. That is man-to-man -man coverage, which we're going to abuse, and on fourth and 18, Michigan just has one last hope. I don't know what their quarterback's going to try to go with. This should be an interception, and come on. I know I'm using Nebraska right now, but I'm trying to avoid losing in fun ways, change how things go, and thankfully I was able to do so. We have won the Big Ten, which means this selection show for the playoff spots is going to be very interesting. And look at Nebraska back to glory with a trophy in their hands. To add on to the good news, Chris Hall won the Heisman, and with these career stats, he took home so many awards throughout his career. But unfortunately, freshman Marcus Brown couldn't win the Lombardi, and we didn't have any other players in the running for the other defensive awards. So when we look at the list of goals, you'll see that one of them is not going to be complete, and that means even if we win it all this year, I have to give away a jersey to a random commenter. Before we jump into the playoffs, I was curious to see who our leading receiver was, Adam Motley, and last year he had one catch for 11 yards, so that's a big step up. Rushing-wise, David Dennis had less yards than Chris Hall, and he was also pretty dominant on the ground throughout his career. Looking at his stats, they're not that great, so I'm not sure how he's a 97 overall, but he led the country in passing yards by almost a thousand, and we have to play the winner of this game in the next round. With 34 seconds left, Iowa is trailing by five, but I almost want to play them, because they ruined our undefeated season, and I feel like we have to get revenge. They are in field goal range, and it should be a very good one in the quarterfinals. It's 2028, but their offense is still non-existent, and let's see what happened in all the other opening round matchups. Notre Dame beat Syracuse 27-11, but I guess this isn't a surprise, and Cincinnati's finally made it back after they had their run when they were in the American, but it looks like they're about to lose at Georgia Tech. It's fourth and six, and they are going to pick it up, but this game couldn't be decided in regulation, so it's going to be headed to overtime instead, and Georgia Tech is stuck on a fourth and three where they go with the screen, and thankfully they do pick it up plus a lot more. Once again, though, they've gotten held to another fourth down, and they passed it on the half inch line. I don't know what they were thinking, but the Bearcats have survived on to the next round, and this is the final matchup before we get to hop into our first playoff game. It looks like the Trojans are going to take down the Hurricanes by 10, and here are the eight remaining teams in this season six playoff. It is time that we get revenge on the Hawkeyes, and it's taken us so long to get to the playoffs, but I think we're ready for it. So far, Iowa's offense really hasn't done much. Here on third down, we're going to get the sack, and you got to think, this offense is insane. There's no reason we should struggle against Iowa. We're carving them up the middle with Adam Motley, and ever since I switched our offense to an air raid attack, we have played like 50 times better. I'm not sure why our star wide receivers dropping easy ones like this, but to show I'm still confident in him, I'm going to look his way on third down, and this time he is not going to make up for it. I mean, he held on, which gives him a school record, but he didn't get in, and I'm assuming they're expecting a run up the middle, so I'm going to go to the outside, which works. It pretty much just ended up being a blowout. Nothing interesting really happened. The Hawkeyes couldn't do a thing on us on third and 21. They're not going to get it. And if you were wondering how quarterback Adam Clements was doing, he has passed for 74 total yards. This is going to just be swatted away, and we are moving on to the semifinals. Our opponent will be whoever comes out on top of this one, and Georgia has that dog in them, so I'm a bit terrified. They have obliterated USC, which to be fair is something we also did, but Georgia plays in the SEC, and both of their losses were by seven points or less. On the other side of the bracket, Cal seems to have found success in the ACC, and it looks like Cincinnati's not going to be able to pull this one out. It's fourth and nine, and they are going to drop the ball, so the Golden Bears are going on to the semifinals, and they'll be facing either Notre Dame or LSU. Well, the Tigers don't have a great chance, but they're at about midfield with 10 seconds left, and for some reason, they didn't hike it until now, so this is the final play of the game. They're going to go out of bounds, and this is what your updated playoff bracket is looking like. This is one of the toughest games we'll ever play, but I feel like if we were ever going to win it, this would be the time, and going into this one, we are the underdogs on third and seven. We're going to give up a huge play to Fox.
roster. Nobody was able to keep up with him in man-to-man -man coverage, and that was just bad defense. With the rain coming down this hard, he slipped right off of our corner. On third and five, we're going to go with the halfback screen, and those blocks were great, but it has been tough moving the ball down the field against the Bulldogs. Again, we're going to get great blocks, and Dennis is going to fight for a few extra here. So you know what? We're actually not doing too bad. I am a little concerned about how many big plays we're giving up, but we have a chance to get them off the field here, and that's an interception from McNeil. The Georgia quarterback can't believe he threw it, and what a play from junior strong safety Jonathan McNeil. He legitimately just wanted that ball more, and here on third and 17, that is a laser to Jennings, so the drive stayed alive, and I'm hoping it's about to end with a touchdown. In the third quarter, just like the end of the half, we got held to another field goal, but I feel like defenses are starting to come alive, and on this halfback screen, we are going to lock it all up. This is a crucial third and 10 here. I went with the play action, and up the middle, we are going to have an open receiver Jennings holds on, and let me tell you, Marcus Jennings isn't one of the guys I've really highlighted, but he always manages to make amazing plays, and that was just the wrong button. That one guy got stuck guarding two guys, and he chose the right player, but I'm determined to get a safety, and they just went with the pass. I ran commit. This could not be going worse for us. Just like in the first half, we're going to give up a massive touchdown, and I can't believe Georgia's done it again. By the time there's about three minutes left, Georgia got a field goal, but we are about to take a lead, and this finish should be electrifying. I sent a blitz in there. We're going to hold them, so I'm going to go ahead, call a timeout, and be very grateful that they're deciding to settle for three here instead of going for it. Because of that decision from them, we need to make sure that this is the final drive of the game, and I think we can make it happen. Wait, we did not just fumble that ball there. No, 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 no. You've got to be kidding. I looked up to the camera. I thought the play was over, and on the replay, it is clear as day that this ball pops out way before his knee hits the ground. This would be the most Nebraska way to lose a game. I swear, you can't make this up, and I love the fact that they've decided to start chewing the clock on us. They're about to score a touchdown, so we have almost no hope. It's all going to be over except we blow it up, and please, here on third and eight, don't give up anything stupid. It's over the middle. We're making the tackle, and it kind of sucks that he was in bounds, but we've been gifted an opportunity, so it's time to see how good Chris Hall really is. I think 32 seconds is a solid amount of time on this first play. We're going to take the crosser over the middle. He misses completely. What was that throw? And I'm going to lose my mind. Nebraska can't win at all. This is a 97 overall quarterback, and he just sailed it so far away from the crossing route, so this video is far from over, and I hope the Bulldogs lose here in the championship. I'm not going to lie. I am extremely salty right now, and I need Notre Dame to clutch up in the final 15 seconds. They're doing a dump off, so that does almost nothing for them. They have to score on this final play. They're throwing it up, and please catch it. Yes! I don't know what this defense was from Georgia, but the Irish just won it in a walk-off fashion, and I've never seen a national championship end like that before. We're on an upwards trajectory, but we still haven't won at all, and the only good part about that is I have another chance to complete this final goal. We're honestly not losing that many guys besides the beloved Chris Hall, who had over 15,000 career passing yards, but it seems like we have eight guys here that decided they didn't want to declare, and Marcus Bowman is an 85, so it shouldn't be hard to tell him he needs his college degree and get him to come back. 6'4 halfback Taylor Cooper wants to transfer to Washington, so I'm going to have him leave. And I don't even care. He doesn't want to be a part of a winning Nebraska program that's actually good again. What's kind of crazy is throughout this entire video, there wasn't a single player that transferred in, but that's been fine because we have done so well with recruiting. This class really didn't feature anybody too crazy, but we do have a new starting kicker in Derek Caldwell, and I'm excited to see how the offseason went with these training results. It looks like there's a ton of guys that are over 90 overall, and at quarterback, I have a tough decision to make because I want to start LaShawn McQueen. He's never taken a snap for us, and he's two overalls worse, but this guy has 98 speed, and his last name's McQueen, which makes it even better. If you remember Marcus Bowman and Josh Lane, it's safe to say that our DB room is stacked, and let's just hope that this year has a better ending than the last one. Going into this season, we are projected to win the Big Ten, and the only team ranked above us is Georgia. I hope we meet them in the college football playoffs. I'm going to go ahead and sim up to the USC game. We should win the first few weeks, and hopefully Deion Sanders is no longer at Colorado. We are going to take care of business, and we only put up 33 on North Dakota. Against South Dakota State, though, this year we put up even more than last, and I just realized since we have a 98-speed quarterback, we should probably go to the option and run it more. I mean, LaShawn McQueen isn't doing terrible, but he's averaging a pick a game on 50% completion percentage, so I think it's best if we switch things up, and nothing makes me happier than seeing that Georgia has already lost a game, and it's to Arkansas just like last year. To be honest, I think we're good enough to make the playoffs just by simming through everything we did lose to USC, so now I'm a bit concerned. Maybe I shouldn't have switched to the option run. Even against Maryland, it was close, and now we're playing number one Penn State. So you know what? I'm going to go back to what worked for us last year, and I will be hopping into this game against Penn State. We're on the road, and it should be their wideout game. So now it's time to test out Mr. LaShawn McQueen. He doesn't get it out in time. And after the play, he's laying on the ground injured. Matt Moore is in the game, and I hope that this is not something that goes on for the course of the season. I mean, we're going to score a touchdown. And by midway through the second quarter, 
quarter, LaShawn McQueen is back out there. I'm going to evade around this defensive end. There was no reason he would ever have a chance at catching me, and this is going to turn into a touchdown. Here in the fourth quarter, it's all tied up at 21, and I am going for it on fourth down. I'm playing very aggressive, but I was not expecting our tight end to just stop his route there. Honestly, my plan was just to take off with LaShawn McQueen on third and eight, though they went with a run here, so Penn State's going to do what I should have done and take three, but they left a lot of time on the clock, and we're already down inside about the two, the one, and Maurice Bailey just fell a bit short there, but it allows us to kill off some more clock before we end this drive with a touchdown. It should be an easy little throw, and I cannot be choking this hard. On fourth down, we're just going to take our slant, but our freshman kicker missed the extra point, so we're just trying to do anything in our power to keep them out of field goal range. I am so frustrated right now. This man-to-man -man coverage locked up, and we're about to take down the number one team in the country. That is a terrible final play, but thankfully, we should make the playoffs now, and that really all depends on how LaShawn McQueen does. I trust that he's good enough to lead us to victory, so I'm going to sim to week 13 against Wisconsin, and some of these scores are really low for us. Against number 12 Minnesota on the road, we won by 11, and I told you all, just have faith in the team. We can get it done. We win 51-0. to zero. So at this point in the year, we are sitting at the number four spot in the country, and guess where Georgia is? Down here at 17 with four losses on the year. LaShawn McQueen is also leading the Heisman race right now, and this kid is a sophomore, so I almost want to play one more season just to see how he develops. I mean, I have simmed all but one game. We keep taking care of business, except we lose to Iowa again, and unfortunately for us, that means we're not going to make the Big Ten Championship. No matter what happens this week, I doubt we're going to get a first round by, and LaShawn McQueen didn't even come close to sniffing the Heisman. To be completely honest though, he really shouldn't have. These stats were not anything special, and for five-star Maurice Bailey, this was a very disappointing career. Marcus Jennings and Jerry Harris led the team in receptions, and we somehow had two centers as finalists for the Remington Award, which only can go to a center, but just like all the other seasons, there is nobody even in the running for these defensive ones. Our first round playoff matchup is going to be against Cal, and don't ask me how Georgia made it with four losses as the seven seed, but I am simulating their game, and they beat Ohio State. Just like last year as well, LSU and Iowa both did pretty well, and we better not lose to the Golden Bears here at home. I feel like this team is better than being the sixth seed, but maybe not approaching halftime. It looks like it's going to be seven to seven. They just scored, and how did Bowman not make a play on this football? I am trying my hardest to make sure it is tied up at the half. You know what? I might as well just take off with McQueen here, and I'm going to throw this corner route whether it's open or not, which is going to work. The seeding on these teams makes no sense because Cal is 11 and one, but Georgia at eight and four was the seven seed, and I know the SEC is better than the ACC, but it is not that much of a difference. In future videos, I'll make sure to edit it, even though I don't like the touch stuff like that. We're stopping Cal though, and I'm glad that our defense is good because we have not put up many points today. In the end, we're going to win by 14, but we probably need to play better in the next round, and player of the game has to go to junior cornerback Kevin Prater, who had two interceptions. He has carried us into the quarterfinals, and we've already beaten USC once this season, so I don't think it's any surprise that not only we're winning, but we are dominating them in the second quarter. With a touchdown here, we should be taking a 28-point lead on the Trojans, and I'm honestly embarrassed for them, but at least quarterback Matt Moore got a little bit of playing time in this game. Our next opponent will be the winner of this one, and of course George is playing 75 overall San Diego State. You know, I talked about wanting to get revenge, but I actually just want to win it all with Nebraska, and from what I just saw, the Bulldog offense did not look very scary, but I swear, it's always their defense that gets you, and these SEC teams, even in Season 7, are going crazy. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if LSU gave Clemson their first loss of the year, because Clemson's starting quarterback is out with a broken tailbone. Well, it turns out their backup quarterback is him, and Clemson's moving on to play Alabama for a spot in the championship. On the other side of the bracket, we're playing Georgia in the semifinals again, and trust me, we are not going out sorry again. We are wearing all black because it's their funeral, and you know what? I'm just gonna roll out and scramble around with LaShawn McQueen. He's gonna make the quarterback spy miss because he's too good and go down at the 25. I refuse to lose to the Bulldogs again. The halfback's gonna be open in the flat. We will take the opening touchdown, and let me tell you something. This defense has been incredible. That should have been a lurked interception, but we still got the stop on Georgia, and if we can score here, it looks like it might get ugly fast for the Bulldogs. Come on, boys. We just gotta pick this up, and of course we fumble. We are the unluckiest against them, I swear. Let's just say that the ball did not lie. We are gonna lock up again. Third and nine, and I might as well just get the interception with McNeil. You know what? He has been incredible for us, and I love to see that sad Bulldog quarterback face. It might never be a rivalry in real life, but in this dynasty, we have a rivalry with Georgia all because of one result. And to be honest, I am more concerned with how this one goes than actually winning a championship. I'm just going to scramble in to make it 21-0, to and I fumbled. I fumbled. I should have known better than to let LaShawn McQueen get lit up like that, and I learned a lesson from the last time to not run commit on the goal line. We're going to get the safety, and if we hadn't fumbled the ball twice, this would have been a perfect first half. We're about to get in again, though, and you've 
got to be joking. Somebody bounce on the football. I know I probably should have slid there, but I wasn't expecting a third fumble. And here on fourth and inches, I'm going up the middle. We are dominating Georgia right now, and they seem to be showing a little bit of life here in the second half, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. We're going to get another interception. Douglas, don't go out of the end zone. You know what? After how we lost last year, this could not be a better response from us, and it makes me so happy we are going on to the championship. It's been difficult to do with Nebraska, but I'm trying my hardest, and I'm not sure which of these two teams I'd rather face. Clemson's undefeated, but they're using a backup quarterback, and Alabama has two losses, so I guess I'm fine with either. It looks like Clemson is going to lose, though. They're taking a sack on fourth down, and it's going to be us versus the Crimson Tide. Their quarterback, Lawrence Rogers, didn't look the best, but to our luck, he'll come out and throw for five touchdowns against us. It's been a long time, but Nebraska's back in the championship, and Mercedes-Benz Stadium is a sea of red. On third and six, I am going to send seven at their quarterback, see if he gets it out in time. He is able to somehow make the pass. He it's completed, and Paris just broke free. There is no way that should happen. I probably could have made a tackle there still. Instead, I put down my controller and just complained. I'm getting deja vu to the Georgia game, and I know I shouldn't go for this on fourth and seven, but I'm going to play aggressive. This wheel route should get wide open. I probably should have taken this closer pass. That was a bad decision. Well, Alabama scored again, so it's 14 to zero, but that is cover three. I'm going to take the seam, and what a throw. It was a dart from LaShawn McQueen, but again, I just can't stop the Crimson Tide, and he's going to get held up here. So far, it seems like this championship is going to be a blowout. I have the corner route here inside the two, but because Gary Harris fell short, we're going to have to work for it, and that wasn't too hard. What I'm struggling with is stopping the Crimson Tide. Here on third and six, we get the sack, so finally, we're able to hold them, and that was Marcus Brown who made the play. That guy never won a defensive award, but he was a good defensive end for us. I'm going to take my check down to Bailey, and even though the five-star athlete didn't have the best career, I've been pretty satisfied with him this season. That is another dart, and LaShawn McQueen is a literal cheat code. I didn't even realize we had him on the roster for a long time. We're going to get a stop on third and ten with a big hit, and yes, I'm calling a timeout. This is a perfect opportunity for us to get points before the half. I want to return the kick, and you have got to be kidding. The game dragged me away from the ball, so by the time I went back to it, it just bounces off my foot, and Alabama's going to score because of it. I can already see the comments, oh, you suck. Yes, I know I suck. That is what makes this stuff entertaining. If I was good, it wouldn't be. But just wait until my custom team is done for the long, drawn-out Dynasty series I want to play on the channel. It's going to be very fun, probably three to four games an episode, and a lot more detail, but you'll see that I'm not great, and it might take a while to win a championship with them. It should be a really fun series, though. I hope you all are looking forward to it now. And over the next couple weeks before it releases, I will be posting some sneak peeks on it. I'll be giving you all little hints on where the custom team's going to be. It should be a good time. This is a huge run from LaShawn McQueen, and I'm getting pumped up about the future stuff that's coming on the channel, but I need to finish off this game, and I just threw an interception by hitting the wrong button. Beautiful. This video does not end until I win a championship with Nebraska, and this is probably the best chance we would get for a lot of seasons, so I need to take advantage of it. I'm just going to roll around with 98 speed LaShawn McQueen, and he has toasted everyone. You know, I should probably do that more if I want to win this game. That just toasted our man-to-man -man coverage, and I've been sending a lot of blitzes, but this one actually worked. That means we're going into the fourth quarter with the ball, and I accidentally called a timeout to start it out, so not a great start, but we do have somebody toasting their cornerback, and Motley, Adam Motley, is going to get it done. I'm starting to feel like we are in a much better position at this point. I don't know what they're going with on this third down play. That was a great route, but I am confident in this defense to continue putting them in uncomfortable situations. This time, they're going to not pick it up, so we have them on a fourth and two. I am going to try to send the house, and we get the blitz in. That might just be game. I am going to go with the pass here just because I know that I can roll around and scramble if need be, but I'm going to throw this one up to Adam Motley. He comes down with it, and my aggressiveness is paying off. If we were to lose this at this point, I would just be one of the worst players out there because we are about to take a two-possession lead on Alabama, and here on fourth and seven, they're going to go with the halfback draw, which means it's all over. It took seven seasons, but Nebraska won it all, and someone needs to go back and figure out whenever I recruited LaShawn McQueen. He got us to the point where we are going to be lifting this trophy again, but I still was never able to win a defensive award in this rebuild, so I will be giving away a jersey to a random commenter on this video, and make sure to leave some way for me to contact you, like Instagram or Twitter. If you were curious, all these players declared for the NFL draft after we won the championship, and Chris Hall set so many school records in this video. That also led to a lot of new Nebraska school receiving records being set, and I'm assuming if you made it this far, you had a great time watching this rebuild, so if you want to see some of my other ones, you can do that right here.